Okay, so in this section, we are going to learn about being able to see the information and the results that are coming from our campaigns, right? We want to be able to see where we need to target more, where we want to put more of our budget, where we want to pull some of our budget. And obviously, we're putting an ad out there a lot of the times to the public, and we want to see who's reacting the, the best way. So. There's quite a few different ways to go about that, and I want you to understand the basics of how to maneuver and see these things. So under breakdown, let's start with that first. There's, a, um, there's several options you can go through here, and right now what I want to look at is age and gender. So as you can see under the by delivery portion, it allows you to do a lot of different things. Right, so we can go through, see where the ad was placed, and see when they actually, the best time of day in the viewer's time zone that was the best performing. Right, if we wanted to see the device type, if we wanted to see where they were actually at, right, their physical location, and, and, and see if there was a certain city that was reacting better, obviously, we're going for the same country, same things of that nature, but age and gender is really a revealing portion that will help you to identify where to go and target. So let's go ahead and get into that one and see what comes up, right? So we'll go ahead and we'll select age and gender. Now, as you see behind me, there is the information that popped up. So it's going to sort however we choose, um, whether you do it by results, how many people, right, it reached. It'll go from a descending order, right, or if you want it to, it'll go through an ascending order from the least amount to the most. So you choose that. And the same thing with the options with the cost per result, right? Maybe you want to just go through and say, hey, who brings me the cheapest results, who brings me the most expensive results. So clicking that right away, will sort that out for you and reveal that information. So let's just go ahead and look at that aspect for the moment. So we did cost per result, as we see here on the first line, it's saying that there's $4.68. So we scroll across and we see that it reached out to 511 people and two form fills. So this is the target audience group of 25 to 34 year old men. And we got two form fill outs out of 511 people. So we see that it's not a bad result, right? By any means, but compared to a lot of the other things within what we see, it wasn't, there's better opportunities essentially. So as we can see here, the top performing one were, Females between the ages of 45 to 54 at a dollar and 46 per form fill out. I mean, that's that's fantastic. And the one where we got the most action next was 35 to 44 year old females for two dollars and 51 cents. Not too bad either. And then the next revealing one was 25 to 35, excuse me, 34 year old females at two dollars and 93 cents a form fill. So. Obviously, we see a pattern there, right? We have women here, we have women here, and we have women here. So now based on that, you can decide if that is a profitable market to keep going after, or do we want to tap into something else? So you would then make a specific campaign targeting these age ranges right now i'll go into some split testing later but essentially right now what we did with this campaign is we took all men and women from the ages of 18 well that one kind of slipped in there from the ages of 25 all the way up to 65 plus and we grouped them in here. And the reason we did that is I wanted to see 
who was going to perform well in this specific area. And the only way to do that is to group everybody into the same group. And then from there, we can start dissecting and getting our true target audience. I mean, not that we don't want to go after men, but I mean, this isn't a, a bad conversion ratio by any means as far as the cost. 649 people seen it, seven form fillouts. I mean, that's a little above a 1% uh, conversion rate, which means 100 people seen it. And for every one person, that equals a percent on an action taken. So, I mean, definitely not a bad cost per lead form fillout, but obviously we see that within these three age groups, 25 to 34, 35 to 44, and 45 to 54, we're going to get a lot more action, right? Like I said, not that these other groups are bad or that we don't want to focus on them, but if we're going specifically for result-driven type of performance, then we've definitely identified the market right here. So that helps us to understand who, who reacts better and where we essentially can put some more money to. Now, we don't have any crazy numbers as far as wasted spend, I would say. Um, I mean, there's a little bit down here to where it was four dollars and forty two cents, five dollars twenty three cents. I mean, honestly, those those that's not a lot of money, right? And we still are getting action. You know, the lead cost is four dollars and forty two cents. I mean, honestly. Anything below five dollars to me is a win, right? I mean, you got to figure that if we land one client, get them on with a um, mortgage, and essentially, I mean, how much profit is left on the table for you, right? So let's just say that you gathered a hundred people, right? And even let's just go through the most expensive one at four dollars and sixty-eight cents times one hundred is $468. So we have 100 people that gave us their information and it cost us $468. We only need one to obviously get our money back and become profitable. So that's where I don't want you to get too caught up on the cost per results, right? But at the same time, you know, be aware of the cost per result, right? Because if you're if it's costing you 20 or $30 to get somebody, and obviously you do the math, you know, 30 times 100 is 3,000. I'm not saying that that is not the right direction you wanna go in, but are there other options for a cheaper uh, cost and essentially more profit to be made? Now, out of those 100 people, for example, on some other veteran, campaigns that we've run we do get ads or excuse me we do get leads that cost 20 to 30 dollars but the conversion rate and the likelihood for the veteran to get approved for the loan is very likely so the clients that we've had utilize those types of approaches they didn't mind paying you know the the 20 to $30 per lead, uh, the cost per result, because they knew if the, out of a hundred veterans that gave them their information, they're not just, you know, relying on the one to make their, you know, uh, ad spend back, excuse me, ad spend back plus profit. They know that they're going to at least get five to 10, if not more. It just depends. You know, every, every market is different, but Let's just go with the five with the five client acquisition, right? So they they spend thirty dollars per lead, and they have a hundred leads that they've gathered. So that's three thousand dollars. Well, if they get five loans generated with an average value of you know let's say three thousand dollars, that's fifteen thousand dollars that they're going to get back. Sure, they had to spend the three thousand, but it's five x on their money. So. It really just depends on your business model and what lines out and what numbers, you know, make you happy and can make it so that you can get your spend taken care of and recouped, obviously, plus, plus the profit. So I just wanted to show that real quick. Now we can go into some other things right over here. And under 
platform and device, right? Now, most people are on their mobile device, right? We're going to get some leads that are going to come through their desktop, right? I mean, two of them at 75 cents each. I mean, that, that, that's a killing, right? But unfortunately, there just wasn't that many people, the reach that it went in, that it got in front of, right? Only 62 folks. So, I mean, segmenting our audience to only go for desktop is going to be kind of rough, right? Now, segmenting our audience to only go for mobile is the way that you want to go. But in the settings itself, like we had mentioned earlier in the previous model, or excuse me, in the previous model, uh, wow, module, we don't want to only go for mobile device because what's going to happen is when we tell Facebook, hey, we want mobile only, they're going to put us in a different classification when they let our when, our when they let our ads launch. And we don't want that, right? We want to tell Facebook, hey, Facebook, we're open to getting any type of client or customer, right? Whether they are desktop and or they are mobile. Because I promise you this, if you go in your set, your campaign up specifically to be only desktop, you are going to pay a lot higher price than that. In addition to, if you go and you set your campaign specifically only to mobile, this price is also going to increase too. So when we have the setting, that's why we have it to go for all devices, right? We don't want to segment for the device. So the whole point of coming in here is mobile, right? We know more people are going to be on mobile than they are desktop. If you look around in the restaurants and, you know, everyday activities when you're going to the store or whatever you're doing, you see that people are on their, their mobile phones. So this is where the majority of your leads are going to come from. So with that being said, when you are creating the ad itself, please make sure that you actually look at the mobile version of your ad and see if it appeals to you, right? Does it, does it look okay with the image size and the image that you're utilizing? Does the wording, does it adjust a lot from going from the desktop to the mobile? And if it does, being that you know more people are going to be giving a response on their mobile device, custom your message for the mobile platform. So just keep those things in mind because they will definitely have a major impact on your results. So on to the next portion. On here, the by delivery, that pretty much goes over, uh, you can see the placement in device. Right, but we obviously know that we're doing uh, Facebook newsfeed ads, right? As you can see right here, if you were on the right hand ads or on Instagram, it would break those things down for you too. Now, within the, bear with me, by action, didn't push the right button. All right, looks like there's a little, a little delay. All right, there we go. So by action, as you can see, it gives you different options, right? Now, when you have conversions set up, it'll let you know pretty much that same thing how we were just looking at the lead results. Now, if you go and you set up custom conversions, it will reveal itself here. Now, when you get into making videos, you can see the actual breakdown of the information within the view video type. So this information can help you determine and see exactly what people are doing, how they're reacting to it. And I'll go into a video example so you can see what I mean by that. Now, the carousel card is obviously self-explanatory. If you are using carousel ads, it's going to break down each specific ad and how it performed. Now, within the buy time portion, it breaks things down based on obviously the time frame that they were there. So the main portion is going to be the buy delivery. Now I'm going to end this video and we'll start picking back up on some more in-depth portions within the performance columns. And then I'll start going over some video information too and covering some other things. See you then.